Hateful Eight. Hateful Eight. The Hateful Eight. I feel like there was a lot more characters than just eight in this movie. Um, was there? Yeah. <laughs> there was. Eh, we'll get to it. <laughs> so. There might be. This is Quentin Tarantino's eighth movie. Eight. Yes, they tell you that right at the beginning. Luckily, it all lined up perfectly. In case you're perfectly. watching it, you're like, which number movie is this for Tarantino? Oh, it's eight. <laughs> Uh, and it is over three hours long. It is a long movie. But, uh, it's decently well paced. The story yeah. is really engaging. For sure. The violence is so comical, it is so distracting and disappointing <laughs> for the rest of the movie. Oh, really? Yeah, I was, I, it took me out of it so hard anytime someone got shot or, well, it was mostly any time someone died. When people got shot, that wasn't so bad. When you saw like the blood burst out yeah. of their back or something like that. But like when the Mexican guy got his head blown off or the guy in the the shed got shot or all that type oh, yeah. of stuff, it was like way too much blood and way just just But it's pro- it's probably realistic. <clears throat> Compared to what they normally, like, okay, when is the last time you, like, anytime you see a movie or a show where someone gets shot in the head, their head is not going to be intact, unless they're getting shot by, like, a BB gun. So, well, that, that's not true, because the entry wound is always way smaller than the exit wound, right? So, you're, right. the entry wound is generally the same diameter as the bullet, depending on what you get shot with. The exit wound is horrific. It can be, right. you know, like, can go from the size of a, a dime to the size of a grapefruit, the entry yes. to exit. This was like he was shooting water balloons full of blood. Yeah, but weren't, like, the big ones, weren't they kind of getting shot with, like, a rifle? Sometimes. I I don't know. I, I just felt it. Did you see Death Wish? With Bruce Willis? Is no. Eli, Eli Roth? I felt- Yeah, I don't care for Eli Roth. So I felt like this, the violence, was only meant- So it was Greg Nicotero who did it, the guy who was in yeah, The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead. That they were trying to stay on par with the violence of Tarantino films. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it detracted from the movie in general by- Ah, uh, okay. You know what I mean? Like the- it was kind of cartoonish, like just no, overly. It was definitely over the top. Yeah, and I, it, I think if you would have, it was distracting. If you would have, well, like, okay, so the, there's a guy's throwing up blood after they mm-hmm. drank the poison. Yeah, you felt that was okay, like that felt not distracting to you. D- dis- distracting in 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 what way? It's, I mean, it's the main focal point of the scene. So, what is it going to take away from? It takes away from you feeling like this is actually happening. You're like, wow, that's aggressive. That doesn't really happen in real life. I mean, I it doesn't happen normally, but I, I've never seen someone drink poison. I, I don't guess, know what that's going to do. I guess that's true. But like when uh, Kurt Russell is vomiting all over that girl's face, I don't know. It just oh, felt yeah. like <laughs> it, it, it just felt just to be shocking. More than to be realistic, which is kind of disappointing based on how good everything else was. Like, yeah, the tension, it's... everything felt so high stakes until it actually got paid off and the payoffs were goofy. I didn't, I didn't mind them. I thought no. they worked. Why don't you explain the plot? Okay. So the plot of this movie is about eight. Hateful people. Yes. Uh, okay, so basically it is about John Ruth, the hangman, which is Kurt Russell. He has captured Daisy Domergue and is taking her to Red Rock to be hanged for a bounty of $10,000. They are making their way there. They're a couple days out. There's a huge storm that is bearing down on them, so they need to get to 
uh, what is that place called? Minnie's, uh, Haberdashery. Haberdashery. Yeah. Um, they happen across Samuel L. Jackson on the way, who fought in the, what I believe was the Civil War. Yes. Well, yeah. And no, for sure it was the Civil War. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Korean War. One of those many, many wars that happened in this country that we don't even really know about. Uh, so he fought in the Civil War. He is a, a grizzled veteran at this point. And uh, they pick him up, take him along. There's some... And they don't trust each other. No, nobody trusts anybody because it's the, it's the Wild West. And that's just how things were, I imagine. Yeah, <laughs> they <laughs> probably. <laughs> also, this is right on the heels of of the you know the civil war, or not on the heels of civil war, but there's still a lot of black white tension between you know the country. Yeah, not that a lot of people agreed with the the decisions and the outcomes of the war. Yeah, that so, and Kurt Russell is a bounty hunter who is transporting a person. Samuel L. Jackson has three dead bodies. That he's trying to transport. So you have two people who one is taking someone to get killed. The other who has already killed other people riding together in a, a buggy. <laughs> like, yeah, that. Yeah. With be, a killer. <laughs> yeah. You'd be, uh, it'd be tough to trust each other. Don't you think, okay. Cause I'm pretty sure that they still said that even, even at that day and age, Samuel Jackson's didn't he still have a bounty on his head? Whether it, even though it was like small at that point. Yeah, I, he okay. So they they break down about Samuel Jackson having been he fought for the North and got captured and was in prison, lit his whole prison on fire, killed yeah. uh, it was like forty seven uh, Southerners, but he also yeah. killed another thirty six like thirty six <laughs> uh, Northerners. And so he escaped, but they couldn't prove it in the north, so they didn't kill him. But there was a bounty on his head, but as time went on, the bounty dropped lower and lower and lower until right, it just kind of no went away. Everyone kind of forgot about him. Yeah. But did it go away completely is what I'm getting at. I mean, I'm, my point is, Kurt Russell being a bounty hunter, he would know that, right? He He should probably know the big active bounties. Like, oh, I'm also going to take you with me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I I feel like... I, I feel it, like It might have been gone at that point. I don't know. Maybe everyone thought he was dead. Yeah, I feel like what they said was basically nobody cared at that point. Yeah. That enough people tried and the money kept getting lower and lower. It, it just wasn't worth it to go after him anymore. Um, Another focal point that revolves around Samuel Jackson is his Lincoln letter. That he got uh, from the president after the war because Obama. he, f- yeah, he, he fought valiantly, and they became pen pals, yeah, s- as such. And so he possesses this letter written by Lincoln that was, you know, meant specifically for him. And and he's like he's known for having this letter, so it's it's a well known commodity that he has. Uh, after that, they come across, uh, the soon to be sheriff. I can't remember his name. Walter Goggins is the, uh, well, yeah, Walton. It's Walton. Walton, my bad. Walton Goggins in real life. Chris which, Mannix. Is that what it was? Mm-hmm. I thought he was the best part of this movie. I agree. A hundred percent. He was, he was great. I, I, I like him. What was so um, impressive for his character? Mm hmm. Was he plays that stereotypical southerner, white that trash, racist. racist. Yeah. And he was that character again, but he wasn't the stereotypical version of that. Yeah, he You know what I'm saying? Like he Uh huh. He didn't seem like he didn't seem overtly racist. He seemed like he seemed he seemed like a legitimate person. He didn't seem like a a caricature of that. Like yeah. I thought he did great. I really enjoyed him in this. Yeah, he's he's great. So they get him. He is uh, to be the sheriff of uh, Red Rock soon, and they Which, all is that true? Buggy up. That's true, right? Like that was that part. I do believe is true. 
Because it was never I, confirmed and it was doubted the entire time. There's so many things that happen in this movie where you, you're not sure if it's true or not. Mm-hmm. You, you don't know what, what's the real story because <laughs> most things turn out to be lies. <laughs> Uh, okay, so they make their way to Minnie's haberdashery, and the the blizzard is like right on them. So they are needing to hurry. They get there. They are greeted by Bob. Yes, the Mexican. Um, yeah, Bob the Mexican. <laughs> Which he he didn't seem that Mexican, right? I mean, I guess he spoke some Spanish, but like, um, I mean, he spoke Spanish, but he had that accent. I guess. It just didn't feel overtly Mexican to me, but maybe, I don't know. Not, not overtly. So like, like, I mean, for, if you're going to get the moniker, the Mexican, I feel like you got to really be Mexican for that to happen. And I didn't feel like that was a justified moniker. Maybe because he's like the only one here. Yeah, maybe. Uh, okay, so. Which, he was saying he worked for Minnie's haberdashery. And Samuel Jackson said at one point in the story, I don't know if that's true because Minnie used to have a sign that said, no dogs, no Mexicans allowed. Yeah. And she took it down two years ago. Do you know why she took it down? And he's like, nope. Like, cause she started letting dogs in here. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> I thought that was such a funny line. Uh, yes. Um, I, uh, I don't know. I mean, so they get to the place and they go inside and there are, there are three more. So there's Bob the Mexican. Yes. There is John Gage. Yeah. The uh, cowboy. And the cowboy, right. Which there is the. He was a weird right. character. He was a very weird character. He's like, I, like I was uncomfortable every time he was on. And it, the, it, the actor, Michael Madsen, yeah. That's not normally how I feel about him, but something about him in this movie was like, something is just off. Something doesn't fit right. Hmm. I didn't. I, I didn't get that no. from him. Uh, and then there maybe was it could be his long hair. Man. His long hair made oh, him look okay. very different, and maybe that's what he it was. Strange. That is yeah. just like he was recognizable, but slightly different enough to like, like throw up signals in my brain. Do you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Where, like, not, I'm not saying long hair is a problem, although, generally, come on, guys, cut your hair. But, uh, mm. <laughs> um, it was like, I, I knew him, but my brain didn't want to recognize him at the same time. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, he didn't stand out to me. Yeah. Uh, then there was Tim Roth. He played the hangman. Oswaldo uh, Mowbray? Something. Mob, Mowbray? Yes. Something along those lines. And then there was the old man, uh, and I don't remember his name either. He was the general, right? Bruce Dern is the actor, and General Sandy Smithers. Smithers, that's right. Who fought in the war for the rebels and lost. Yes. And he's very bitter about it still. Yeah. Um, But the owners of the haberdashery, the regulars, they are nowhere to be found, and they are supposedly visiting... Her Someone sick mom, on, I think it was. Right. On the other side of the mountain. Yeah. So Bob is looking after the place. Um, basically, it's the story of these people. Nobody trusts anybody. Um, uh, John Ruth is under the assumption that everybody knows who Darmagu is and is either trying to help her escape or going to try to collect her bounty for themselves. Yeah. Which would mean killing him and taking her away. Yeah. So, like, um, he, sh- he felt at risk from everyone for any reason, essentially. Yeah, for multiple reasons. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there is, I mean, there's, a, like, a lot of little things that don't seem that that meaningful, I guess, until later, like the broken door. Yeah. That you have to, that you have to nail shut. I do like that anytime that door opens and just like everyone is screaming, like, <laughs> what to do. Yeah. Like, even the people who just got there. I, I, I thought that part's funny. Like, you yeah. can't, 
it, it's hard to even understand what anyone is really trying to say. They're, everyone's just yelling and screaming at, at whoever just came in the door. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought that was funny. I think Tarantino does stuff like that really well. Yeah. Where he will take an extended amount of time on something that feels so insignificant and he'll hit it multiple times and you're just like, why? Why are like you doing it. this? Yeah. And then yeah. at the end, he'll pay it off. So he'll turn this insignificant thing, build it up and pay it off and it'll feel important. When in reality, yeah. you think about it, really still doesn't mean anything, but he makes you care. Which is yeah, exactly. so impressive. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I do, I do agree. Um, so yeah, I mean, basically nobody trusts anybody. Uh, John Ruth is attempting to disarm everyone, which, if, if you're, if you're just a dude, let's say you're just a dude who's traveling through and you're stuck at this place with a bunch of, People you don't know, you're gonna give up your gun? No way. Also, well, I guess he kind of had to because yeah, Samuel Jackson had the knife to his throat. Yeah, so uh, Joe Gage got a knife to his throat. Oh. Joe, is it Joe Gage or John Gage? Joe, it's definitely Joe. Joe Gage. Yeah. Okay, he got a knife to his throat from Samuel Jackson and then got his gun taken away. But also, someone else had a gun who gave it up. I think more freely, but. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think was it the was it the hangman Oswaldo? Maybe I don't remember. But anyways, they, they or was it the sheriff? Might have been the sheriff, but I, I don't remember exactly. But uh, he tears it apart, breaks it down, and then yeah. he has them go and throw it in the uh, outhouse. <laughs> yeah, and I was so upset at that. Like, I don't know Every, how much uh, guns cost back then. I know that they're minimum, like, $200 now, right? Like, how, how, what's oh, the yeah. cheapest For gun sure. you could think of? It's gotta be. Probably about 150, 200 bucks. Yeah, right around there. So, you imagine back then, it would be quite a bit of money you'd have to invest to getting a gun. Not only. Yeah. The money you have to put in it, but the protection it affords you when you have it. And this guy just goes and throws it in the toilet because he is uncomfortable. Yeah. That, that was like, I, I just remember thinking like, who do you, who do you think you are? <laughs> dude? You're not like, you are not the actual law. Yeah. You're just a guy. Yeah. You are you don't get just to make a bounty hunter. Decisions. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm a hundred percent on board. And, they didn't make a fuss because, uh, I'll just spoil the ending now, because everyone in the building other than the general was there to kill John Ruth. So they were like waiting for the opportunity to do it. Right. But if that, if they were all just random people, they definitely would have been, you know, like, Hey, no, you're not taking my stuff. What are you doing? Like, yeah. Or even, all right, you can have my gun. But don't go throw it in the the outhouse. Please don't go dump it in the outhouse. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Um, so I don't know. I guess I don't even know how to proceed. Yeah, so they're all in the building together, and throughout the story, different things will come up that will make you like as the audience, as the person watching. You don't know what's happening. The probably eighty percent of the movie, maybe seventy five percent of the movie, you don't know who's a good person, who's a bad person. It's easy to think that they're all bad or that they're all just misunderstood and what's going on. People are maybe being overly paranoid. Like any option feels possible. Which yeah, anything could happen. I really enjoy when you are watching a movie and you are unsure. If the character on screen is being paranoid or being accurate, when you're not sure if what they're doing is justified or if they're just being crazy. And I feel like this movie does that really, really well that it paints, okay, maybe they're correct. Maybe what they're doing makes sense. 
Or maybe they're just wrong. Maybe they're going to murder everyone for no reason. And it sets the tension level so much higher than if you knew exactly what was happening. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I mean, okay, so this was your first time watching it, right? Yeah. Do you, did you, do you feel like you, like you had a pretty good idea of what was going on or like at what point do you, did you think you had it figured out? <clears throat> I was, or did that point even come? I was confident Samuel Jackson was the good guy from the beginning. Yeah, I, I felt like him and, and Walton Goggins were. Yeah, I agree. Like legit who they say they were mm-hmm. and, you know, didn't have ulterior motives. Everyone else. Ulterior motives. Felt, yeah. um, nefarious. Is that the right word? Like everyone else felt dangerous to yeah. the story. And Kurt Russell felt dangerous because he was so aggressive. Mm-hmm. Everyone else in the house felt dangerous because they were so passive. But Samuel Jackson and Walton Goggins felt very uh upfront about who they were. Like you felt like you could trust them even though they were bad people. Uh yeah, same with um the uh what was the the driver's name? OB. OB, that's right. Yeah. So he's number 9. He's, he seemed yeah, he seemed legit. You also have He wasn't very hateful. Channing Tatum downstairs, so which is number 10. That's true. Just a, mis- mm, okay. a little bit misleading. I don't know how I feel about that. Just kidding. I really don't care. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter at all. Um. So then, uh, at, at some point, uh, after the <laughs> coffee is poisoned. Yeah. So well, before that, I think right. He Samuel Jackson. We find out. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Him and Bruce Stern. Or at odds. He knows. Right? They, they know each other. Yeah. Or they're aware of each other, I think. I don't know if they've ever met before, but they know enough right. about who they are, who they say they are, to recognize each other. They shared a battlefield, he said. And, uh, I, I really hated this part. Um, <laughs> his, his story about his son? Yeah. And, cause it felt so, um, I don't know. It, it did not feel like it lined up. With the rest of the the movie, it didn't. Well, here's the question. Okay, was that a true story? Well, that yeah, I mean, that was my my next point was, had they after? Okay, so right. <clears throat> let me let me just tell what happens, and then I'll answer that question. Got it. Samuel Jackson knows Bruce Dern, knows that Bruce Dern fought for the South. Samuel Jackson is a black man, obviously who fought for the North. And he said, you know, do you know what happened to your son? Because Bruce Dern had been talking about trying to find his son and figure out what happened. And uh, Samuel Jackson says, you know, I, 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 I was with him on his last day. And he said, do you want to know how he died? And he explains this terrible <laughs> Long story about how the son was begging for his life and explained who he was, that he was Bruce Stern's son. So he yeah. stripped him down naked and make him, made him crawl on his hands and knees through the snow in, uh, was it Minnesota? Yeah, I, I think Something so. like that. Somewhere really cold. And he was just like going on and like hitting the point of like, just trying to torture Bruce Dern. Like, your son was so cold. He was suffering so bad. And all this stuff. And I was, like, at that point, I was like, oh, man, I'm, like, really invested. But yeah. but then at the end of it, he says, your son was, he wasn't begging for his life. He wasn't begging for his freedom. He was just asking for a blanket. And so I told him I'd give him a blanket if... He came over and performed sexual acts on me. And those are Samuel L. Jackson's exact words. <laughs> yeah, this is a bit more graphic what he said, but um, and it felt so out of place. 
that I felt like it needed to be referenced again. So what happens, Samuel Jackson set a gun down in front of Bruce Stern when he started telling the story with the intentions of riling him up to be able to kill him in self-defense, which yep. self-defense is kind of uh up in the air. <laughs> like, I don't know. What is that? You know, like, is that really uh, it's self-defense if you give them the weapon and then you make them want to use it against you and then you kill them before they get a chance? But I guess I, it's close. It's close, right? It's yeah, like it's definitely borderline. Close. Like, okay, you you definitely are on the edge of murder and self-defense. Um, my oh, issue God. was the the story he told. I would have liked for him to confirm it being true or false after Bruce Stern was dead. Because yeah, it was so ridiculous, and like it almost had to be fake. It, it sounded fake. It didn't. It didn't line up with the consistency of the rest of the story. It felt very forced to be shocking. You know what I mean? Like, oh, this would be yeah. Like, what? Could you imagine anything worse happening to your kid? This would be so upsetting. And that was like the point of when, like, you know, when he's writing it down, the uh, Quentin Tarantino, when he's writing that story out, like, oh, this is going to be really upsetting for people. There should, there needed to be more. There needed to be more clarification, whether it was true or false. Even, even if someone been like, did that really happen? And him being like, yeah, and like he, no, I made all that up. Well, he could even play coy about it where you still don't know if it's true or false. Yeah. But there should have been at least an additional reference to like, did that, did that really happen? He's like, yeah, maybe, you know what I mean? Like uh-huh. to at least reference like, yeah, this is ridiculous, but it's here. You know what I mean? Like it, it just felt without going back to it felt too out of place. But, yeah, the fact that no one questioned it, I mean, I guess they just all believed it? I th- Or they all could tell it was so ridiculous that they knew it wasn't true? Yeah, well, I mean, everyone yeah, knew what he was doing. Right, oh, for sure. And so, I don't know. It just seemed too big of a coincidence Yeah, for them both to be there. Yeah, so my my gut instinct is that he lied. He just made that story up. Yeah. But uh same here. But uh, at the same time there there was a part of me thinking I was like maybe it's you know because I thought I was like it's too much of a coincidence but then I thought well maybe he maybe that's what Samuel Jackson's doing is he was looking for this guy. Like he knew where he was and he was coming to him to kill him. Maybe. And then it and then these are the events that you know that that unfolded for that to happen. Yeah. Maybe it didn't go exactly like he thought, but like it's, it wasn't a coincidence that they were both there. And you, do you, it, do you, it, it could be a true story. You felt that way watching it or you feel that way now? I felt that way watching it here the second time. Okay. Not the first time. So watching it for me, I feel like Samuel Jackson just happened into this story. Same with Walton Goggins. I felt like those two characters. Yes. Just accidentally stumbled into the story where everyone else was intended to be in the story. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like everyone else. No, I do. Kurt, for whatever reason, Kurt Russell was going to this place. I thought they took like a, a diversion to get there, but they were expected to show up. Right. Right. Like, cause had the blizzard, I believe that, yeah. Had the blizzard not attention. happened, would they have gone there? Uh, they might have stopped there. Okay. I don't know. But I think knowing that there was a blizzard and, yeah, I don't know. I, I think so. I, I thought, I thought there was a line, like, we're, we're not going to be able to keep going. We have to stop somewhere. And they just happened upon that. But I, I could be wrong. Like, I've been known to make a mistake every once in a while. In a three hour movie, yeah. there's definitely room to do that. This is true. But my impression was that they just happened upon this place. So I 
struggled a little bit with the ability for the the gang to prepare and set up for it. I mean, I guess it could have been one of those where it's like, this is the only place, you know, even remotely close to anything between here and Red Rock. Like, it's just known that everybody stops here. You know, everybody comes through and they stop for food or, you know, for something. Yeah. So it, it is... If we hide out here, more than likely, whether or not there's a blizzard or not, he's going to stop here yeah. and we can get him then. Yeah, I, I, that's reasonable, but it's still like a 50-50, right? Oh, for sure. And that, that, like a 50-50 seems very aggressive to murder five people for, <laughs> you know? This is true. I guess, but I mean, I guess if you're a part of a gang and you do that anyways. Yeah, you don't, it doesn't, you don't care. Yeah. Um, one, one other thing that I thought was really funny was that he, he kept like, um, announcing who she is and, and the gang that she's a part of and like, don't you know who this is, this and that. But like, he, he cannot, he did not even know what her last name was. He was like so confident in calling him the, the Domergue, <laughs> Domergue, <laughs> but they were not saying it right. Like until the very end of the movie, <laughs> I didn't, when it was like, I didn't pick that up at all. No? Uh -huh. Okay, so, cause, cause they call her Daisy Domergue, right? Like, don't you know this is Daisy Domergue, this and that? And like, everyone says that, but like, if she's that well known, cause at the end, they, they say it's like Domingue. Okay. I, I, I don't know, I just thought it was funny that like. No, I trust you. If I just... she was as well known as, as you say, and like, you know, everyone knows who this is, like, <laughs> wouldn't you just call her Domingue? <laughs> Like where you get Dar, I get it. Probably looks like Domergue on paper. It definitely does. I don't. Know, I just. I'm, I just I'm looking at it right now. It. I would say Domergue. Right, because even the narrator calls her Domergue. Which okay. Uh, sorry to until the end. interrupt, but I know that was because of an intermission, but I really disliked uh -huh. it. Oh, I knew you would too. Immediately, I knew <laughs> when uh, it I, happened. I liked it. It, it kind of changes the pace a little bit. Yeah, but or the, not the pace, the tone. So the version I watched didn't have an even an intermission break. It didn't have an intermission slide or anything like that. It just jumped straight to the next scene, and uh -huh. out of nowhere, there is a narrator who hadn't been in the first hour and a half, two hours, and he's like. Oh, this is 15 minutes later. And I was like, what the crap is going on? Where did this come from? Why is this happening? Uh, okay. So you're saying there was an intermission in the actual movie? And when they played it in the theater, there was an intermission oh, break. Okay. I didn't even know that. Yeah. And that was right. That makes even more sense. Yeah. It makes sense. Right before. Had you actually walked out of the theater for 10 minutes and come back and it started. Yeah. But if you don't have that. It's very jarring. Uh, it, it is jarring, but I, 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 I thought it was just uh, this. Is what we're doing now? Because <laughs> he comes back. He also comes. So yeah, it made. I was like, okay, this is clearly the intermission break. You know, here's 15 minutes. So I, I'm assuming the intermission was probably 15 minutes. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's, sure. it, it probably lines up perfectly. Like. Okay, 15 minutes passed. They argued, was that self-defense or not? And here's where the story picks up at. That's cool. But the narrator comes back 15 minutes after that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, now you're, you're pushing it a little bit too much. Huh. No, I didn't think that. No. I didn't, I didn't mind the, the presence of the narrator. But, uh, anyways, so we, we took a divergent. From, uh, you were talking about poisoning the coffee. Yes. So Bruce Dern is dead. Poisoning the coffee is next. So, um, all we know is that somebody poisons the coffee. Um, and that Daisy Domergue sees who it is and doesn't say anything. And we know this because the narrator told us. Yes. Daisy Domergue has a secret. <laughs> Which I hated. So, I hated so much. Oh really? <laughs> I, the, just the the narration. I didn't really like um, okay, the so the chapters, the chapter titles either. No, no, I thought that was kind of goofy. I don't know. I I huh. didn't. 
It didn't. Oh, it didn't fill the issues you find in movies sometimes. <laughs> well, again, it's not. They're not like things that destroy the movie for me, or things that I'm like, oh, this is a bad movie because they have chapter titles and a narrator. Uh-huh. They're just small things that stick out. I'm like, oh, I, I was enjoying this, but this really stood out. Like it's, you know what I mean? Like you. It's just a little pinprick. I don't know. I feel like it was after you watched this movie, you're like, man, I really, really enjoyed that movie. But I don't want to tell anyone that I really enjoyed a movie. I need to find some faults. <laughs> I got to make it believable. Uh, I, I guess I hated the chapters. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk about the chapters. chapter titles. Chapter titles. The titles, sorry. Uh, no, I, I, I did enjoy this movie. Other than the violence, other than the narration, other than the chapter titles. There really isn't much that I disliked about it. See, going into, see, I, I didn't mind the violence just because it's, it is Quentin Tarantino. So like you kind of go into it with that expectation of it being like that. So it is whatever. It would have been more jarring had it been someone else. Steven Spielberg or something. Whether it was like a hundred percent exactly the same, just a different director, Mm -hmm. then it probably would have caught me off guard. Yeah. Well, that. That's the thing is, it was so unnecessary to go so over the top because everything else felt so grounded, felt so realistic and was so well done. This movie is beautiful to look at. The acting is great. The story is really, really good. The tension is so high. The over the top violence took away from all of that for me. I could be wrong. I maybe, you know, maybe people loved it and were super excited about it. Did not feel like it lined up with the quality mm. of the rest of it. Yeah. That's all. But anyways, um coffee poison. So, so coffee poisoned. Uh so then that's kind of when we get the the narrator, right? This is right at this point because well, then he's kind of describing It's the, in between. So, okay. get the intermission right after Bruce Stern gets murdered. Cuts to them taking the body outside. Then you have a little bit, and then the narrator comes back to tell you about the coffee. So, so we kind of go back in time a little bit to when Samuel L. Jackson and Bruce Stern are having their standoff or whatever. It, but we see it from a different point of view, and we see that... So, Daisy watches someone has poisoned the coffee. Um... Kurt Russell Which, and... They never tell you who did it. Just to point out, sorry. Mm, they they kind of do. Do they? I'm... Yeah. I have no idea they, who poisoned the coffee. I'm pretty sure that they... It was, it was Joe Gage. <laughs> well... He, oh, he, he even admits He admitted it, it but I, I didn't believe it when he admitted it, but I guess he was a part of everything. I, you're right. See, yeah, when he first did it, I didn't believe it, but then... There was another uh, reference to it. Mm. I don't remember at what point where it kind of pretty much says that he did. Yeah. Well, they that was uh, the thing. I don't remember, though. I don't mean to jump ahead again, but they tell you that Joe Gage, all the... Everyone who was in there, other than Bruce Dern, was with the gang to save the girl. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter who poisoned it. It could have been anyone. No, oh, yeah. And it... it I didn't really, I felt like there should have been one bad guy, which would have made this story a little bit stronger. But that's, again, another small nitpick. Yeah, in the, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it, yeah, it doesn't matter who did it. Someone did mm-hmm. it. It's, it's happened. Um, so Kurt Russell drinks the coffee. Uh, OB drinks the coffee. Uh, Walton Goggins almost is about to drink the coffee. <laughs> I, and so at this point, I thought Walton Goggins did it and was going to drink, uh-huh. pretend to drink the coffee to be like, almost like a red herring for everyone right. else. Like, couldn't have been me. I almost did it myself. But that, that's not what happened. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I remember thinking that the first time too, but. I don't know. There's something about watching a second time when, I don't know, it looked different. Yeah. Like he looked le- genuinely like, oh crap. <laughs> well, they got so aggressively, violently, deadly ill. Yeah. So they just start 
vomiting blood like insane amounts. Did I, I I'm sure I must have told you. But uh when I was a kid, my dad this happened to you. My dad broke his poison the coffee. My dad broke his ankle. I remember. And uh he got prescribed Vicodin, I think. And he took uh. some and was laying on the couch. We had people from church over visiting, seeing how he was doing. <laughs> He was, he was laying down on the couch with his head on the arm of the couch. So his face was a good 10, 12 feet away from the TV. Okay. He sat up, projectile vomited all the way across the room and hit the TV just full blast like a, a fire truck hose just. Boom! And just <laughs> splat across the TV, and people, everyone in the room was like, "Oh no, he's dying!" <laughs> <laughs> it was the most disgusting oh. thing I've ever seen in my life, and uh, that's essentially what happened to Kurt Russell and uh, Ob James Park. <laughs> did did he vomit blood? No, it was. I want to say it was white. I don't know why I know that, but that's in, my, in my brain. I feel like he vomited oh, man. Uh, country gravy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's the worst thing I've ever said. <laughs> so there go biscuits and gravy for breakfast. Oh, man. For at least a week. So, yeah. So they both are vomiting... Until they die. Uh, Walton Goggins, Except, like, drops his cup. Yeah, Kurt Russell is fighting Daisy Domagrew. Domagrew? Domagrew? Domagrew. Domagrew. So, what's a Domagrew? <laughs> and, uh, pins her down and just vomits blood all over her face. Oh, just not stop. And she's just laughing too, cause she's freaking crazy. I, so. Keep in mind, when that happened, she's had so much blood on her face already. <laughs> already. When that happened. She's been punched, hit, kicked. She's gotten everything. I'm sure her nose is broken five different times. When that happened, when Kurt Russell vomited in her face, I thought yeah. I was so confident she was going to die from poisoning because he I, yeah, right? it in her mouth, but that you would think so. Not that's not what happened. It was it was not the case. I, I, it was too diluted with puke. I I have a hard time believing that that poison was based off of anything that actually exists. Oh, probably not. Right? Like it, it couldn't be. Who knows, though, man? Back then, you had them snake oil salesmen with their tonics and. I I don't know. The snake oil is nothing. That's the no. It's have we talked about snake oils? No, we have not. How, and how snake oil salesmen still exist? But they just have rebranded as essential oils. Okay, tell me if I'm wrong. Snake oil. You are. <laughs> thank you. Snake oil means something that doesn't exist that you're trying to sell as something that works. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it, it's not a real. It's not like actual snake so, oil. So like I sell you a bottle of water that I say will cure any ailment. That's me selling you snake yes. oil. Pretty much. Okay. My point being okay. <laughs> my point being, this poison worked really, really well. And I feel like snake oil salesman doesn't line up with how well this poison worked. I was thinking more like uh witch doctors. Ah. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, that makes a little more sense. That was a that was a thought that went through my head for no actual good reason. But anyways. So John Ruth is dead. Yes. OB is dead. Yeah. And she the old man is dead. Daisy is still handcuffed to John Ruth. She's handcuffed to him. Which yes. What a horrible thing to happen to you. Be handcuffed to a dead person? Yeah. For hours. Oh. Yeah. So she's handcuffed to a dead Kurt Russell. And the key, I believe... Is in Kurt Russell's pocket. I thought someone else got well, it. Well, Samuel L. Jackson took it from her when he saw her rooting okay, in her pockets. Right. So she's she's still handcuffed. Samuel L. Jackson's got the key. And now everyone is even on higher alert because there are additional dead bodies. Yeah. So now Bruce Dern is dead. Kurt Russell is dead. OB is dead. 
Yes. Uh, three people are dead, but only two of the hateful eight are dead. So you still have six guys. Yes. Well, uh, okay. five guys and one. Woman. <sighs> Correct. Five hate, uh, six hatefuls. Six hatefuls left. Um. Okay. So poor Ob. I remember what happens after he that. He didn't even hate anyone. He had to die. I know. He was just a. He was just a guy. So, they're, okay, so, actually, before, so I want to go back a little bit before that, when they're all eating dinner, they're having the stew, uh-huh. right? First of all, that would have been the time to poison something. Yeah, except everyone Why was eating it, they just poison right? the food? Don't eat it then. I guess. Or don't poison all of it. Yeah. I don't know. It, I think there was, if if that was how you wanted to do it, there's better ways. Because he, he didn't seem... The least bit suspicious about that stew. He dove in. <laughs> well, he did throw uh, okay. it in her face, and he threw it right in Daisy's face. <laughs> I did. That was comical. All the times she got hit or something happened wow, to her face. Wow, Taylor. I like wh- you like when women get I, hit. That's you think that's funny. This one, you think that's enjoyable? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I like when they're in the uh, in the carriage or whatever it is, or the stagecoach. Yeah. And uh, Samuel Jackson hits her. She goes flying out the door and dragging <laughs> Kurt Russell out with her. That part I thought was pretty funny. Oh, she does get abused a lot in this movie. She gets hit a lot. But she's evil. And it's funny but how she's... someone being evil makes it okay. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, uh, yeah, so we're down to six hateful. It doesn't, someone doesn't even have to be evil. They could just be annoying and it makes it okay for me. <laughs> <laughs> We're down to Anyways. six hatefuls. Samuel Jackson yes. pulls his gun on everybody. Yes. Gives a gun to Walton Goggins and says, for some reason, I trust you the most. I need your help. Yes. He explains to the Mexican like, hey, you told me you work here. And yet, or you told me you work here and that Minnie has been gone for a week. But the stew tastes just like mini stew. And when he said that, my first thought was, yeah, he cooked with the same ingredients that she had. That would make sense. Especially if it's a, Uh. if it's like a restaurant area type place. Like, yeah, she would probably be like, yeah, do this, do that, do that. It'd be close because he's like, you know, I haven't been here for eight months or whatever. Maybe I don't remember very well. But it tastes just like her stew. I think she cooked it this morning. You killed her. Yeah. Seemed like a, a bit of a stretch. But he was right. I don't know. I thought that was plausible. Mm. It's, it's everyone. I mean, it, it, it's plausible because he's basically saying like every person has their own unique way of making it. Right. Yeah. Like and it's distinguishable. Mm-hmm. So I know for sure that she made this. Meaning she was here. She had to have been here today. Meaning you're lying about why you know how long she's been gone. Therefore, you had to have killed her. That's the only reason you would lie. About yeah. It. Well, and part of it they could was, have just said they left today. Yeah, he should have. <laughs> and they left this morning. He, he didn't think the stew was gonna be <laughs> the, uh, the evidence needed to bring him. Down. I think the biggest thing that set Samuel Jackson off was the Mexican thing, though. Him being Mexican, and well, that and the hats being allowed indoors. Uh, he he makes a comment that she doesn't allow hats yet. Everyone's wearing hats. Yeah. But that was, again, I think that was a minor thing. I think the Mexican was the biggest piece of evidence. It was, but it's. I think it all goes towards. Oh yeah, no, I agree. I I, I think he, I think if anything, it's it it might not be what gave it away, but it might have what made him start to be suspicious in the in the first place. Well, he said the so then he's the thing, he's looking for these other things. The thing that made him the most suspicious was he was able to sit in her husband's chair and not get in trouble for it. Yeah. Yeah. And then he finds blood on there and just sweet Dave blows up Bob, the Mexican's face. Yeah. Completely and utterly destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah it's just, and drops his value down too. What's that? <laughs> now he's worth nothing. Cause they were talking about how he oh, was worth yeah. like 12,000 or whatever. Value. Gotcha. Yeah. But now he's nothing because you can't even identify yep. him. 
But it wasn't even, he wasn't Bob the Mexican, was he? He had a different name. He was something else the Mexican. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. His, like, his main name was Bob throughout the movie, but he was someone else. Bob. Yeah. Um, but no one knew that up at, at this point. And, uh, I think they get into a big shootout because Joe Gage admits to poisoning the coffee. And then, uh, Tim Roth pulls a gun and they, oh no, no, no. Before any of that happens, Samuel Jackson is holding his guns at them, questioning them still, wanting Goggins. <laughs> one of the my favorite lines of the movie was, I think it was the most ugly one who did it, which is Joe Gage. <laughs> and then Joe Gage admits to doing it. He's like, I knew it. I knew it was him. I knew the whole time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was funny. Um, but But uh, Channing Tatum turns out to be, have been in the basement this entire time. Yeah. And shoots the testicles off of Samuel Jackson from through the floor. Which Say adios to your huevos. <laughs> which uh oh. you could not do that. You could not call that exactly. No, for you sure. You know what I mean? Like Also, you, it's ir- it's irresponsible. Like if you're gonna take a shot and like reveal that you're here, it needs to be a kill shot. Yeah. Right? You can't that's there's a good chance that you're gonna miss, or it's not gonna hit, or, or I mean, those are the, those are the same things. <laughs> you're gonna miss. You're not gonna hit. You're gonna shoot wide. You're gonna miss left. You're gonna. <laughs> Your bullet is not gonna hit the body. The bullet, yeah. So, so when a bullet impacts something, like a piece of wood, it is going to yeah. shatter and fragment, and mm-hmm. basically, that solid bullet is going to be similar to a shotgun shell that is shooting much less or at a much slower velocity. So it's going to be way less powerful. Plus with all the, yeah, I mean, that's a, plus that's a thick board that it's got to go all the way through. And with all the layers of clothing that they probably have on, there's a good chance it doesn't even get to the skin. Yeah. But from, in the basement, he says, adios to your, your huevos. What does he say? Yeah, something like that. And say adios to your huevos, amigo. Shoots his testicles off through the floorboard. Yes. And then Tim Roth Which, pulls a gun. He gets shot. Walton Goggin gets, gets shot. Uh, Joe Gage gets shot. Everyone basically gets shot. I don't, actually, I don't think Joe Gage gets shot because he turns around and he says that he doesn't have a weapon. And I don't think that he does get shot. Not at that point. Oh, okay. I thought he was, I thought he was also laying on the couch, bleeding out, similar to everyone else. I don't think so. I think he's the only one who didn't get shot at that point. I do think that, uh, the sounds that Samuel Jackson made were probably pretty accurate of what it would feel like. Oh, yeah. That was about to happen. <laughs> that was, ag- that was agonizing. <laughs> Because it was like a wail. Yeah. Just wailing and... Oh, Although, the words he was using to describe his uh, his parts... <laughs> <laughs> that, the, that part... Did not feel it, accurate to the time. No, for sure not. That's like what, what he would say like today if that yeah. happened. Uh, that part I thought was funny. <laughs> Channing Tatum... Channing Tatum... Channing Tatum... <laughs> shot Samuel Jackson. Everyone else had to shoot out. Everyone's bleeding out. Also, also, so dumb because now you're stuck in the basement. Mm-hmm. Like, you, there's no way for you to get out other than that small opening where they're probably going to have guns pointed at you. <laughs> there was he he. It was funny because he he stressed multiple times about taking like the right opportunity waiting for the right moment to to strike being patient and then like he just made the worst decisions <laughs> uh yeah i was do you want more or less Channing Tatum in this movie cuz i'm kind of on the fence I both want ways the exact the exact the, amount i thought the was the perfect fine. amount of Channing Tatum in this movie i thought any more probably would have been too much yeah that might be accurate but any less would have been not enough <laughs> That's probably fair. <laughs> uh, so yeah, no, I thought it was good. 
Uh, so it's at this point where we kind of go back in time, right? And the which we see what happens. I didn't. I didn't like this part. I don't know how you felt, but it felt very. I liked it. It felt very unnecessary. Oh really? Yeah, I don't know. I like basic. Yeah, it, it just shows them arriving at the haberdashery and the different things that they're doing to prepare for John Ruth. Uh, and all the little things like how the door got broken and this and well, that. Well, that's a... Oh, you know what? I, I did have a question, and I don't remember... I felt like it was answered the first time around I watched it, and then not the second time, and maybe I missed it. So, when John Ruth first gets to the haberdashery, yeah. right? And he goes and he gets some coffee, and he immediately spits it out. It's, like, really bad? Yeah. Was there a reason why that coffee was bad? Was it because someone else made it? Yeah, I think it was because someone else made it. The idea was that Minnie makes the best coffee and for the right. coffee not to be good, not even to be uh, consumable is a sign. But, they, but, she, but she did make coffee that, that you know, like just earlier. So yeah, but is it because it was old? No, no, not because it was old. I think it was a new, a new pot. And someone else I made it. I guess that makes sense. But yeah, they. Someone who didn't even know what they were yeah, doing. But they don't expound on it at all. They don't explain that at all. And I, okay, I wasn't sure. I thought maybe, I was like, maybe something happened and it got in there, like some blood or, yeah. you know, something mm -hmm. happened. Uh, but then, yeah, they didn't really talk about it. Yeah. I, I don't think anything happened to it. I could be wrong, but my assumption is the intention was for something to have had happened to it and they cut it because it wasn't really that important. Uh, okay. Um, but the, that whole thing felt very much like just them showing why the door is broken. That, uh, yeah, yeah. The whole thing was like yeah, pretty much that's like, again, I, I think it was, it was cool because they made you care and it felt important when it happened. You're like, Oh, that's why the door is broken. That's why it hasn't been fixed. Whatever. But I, he, it, it was funny. He really, really wanted to blame the door being broken on the Mexican too. He said that like multiple <laughs> times. Like, why is that door broken? Was it the Mexican? <laughs> but the, I, I just, I feel like that was the number one priority of that flashback. You think so? It, it either that or I mean, but they also showed why. I don't know. I mean, I think it's why Bruce Dern was just like sitting there, not moving, not doing anything. Yeah, but did, and that they hid the guns. That didn't matter. Did you question that the whole time? No. But they did. I mean, they didn't want it to be obvious. I don't no, know. I know. It, I, I'm saying the only significant part about the flashback was the door. To me. And I, yeah, I feel like that was the most significant part to Tarantino when he filmed it. it was like, oh yeah, this will people will enjoy this, and I think they did. I think I did. Uh, but there's a lot of time to dedicate to that. Yeah, yeah. I guess it doesn't really serve a purpose. I mean, they tell you who's the bad guys. But I feel right. like you could have done that without having a time jump. Um, or even just mini yeah, flashbacks of someone telling the story or whatever. Like, I don't know. I mean, it was fine. It's not bad. It's not my point. It just felt like too much. Too much time was dedicated to that. Because it was like, yeah. what, 20 minutes to do all that? Yeah, it was a good chunk. It was a good chunk. So... I don't know. It's it's a, it's a lot of time, but anyway, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt again. Uh okay, so we pick back up. We got uh Samuel Jackson is laying on the bed, bleeding out. Uh Walton Goggins has been shot and I think he just gets shot in the leg though, yeah. right? Is that mm -hmm. what it was? So he's he's sitting next to Samuel Jackson. Uh Daisy's on the ground, still chained to uh John Ruth, and then we have Tim Roth is over in the chair and John or Joe Gage is what sitting at the table. Yeah, yeah, he's at the table. 
Because he gets the gun from underneath it. Yes. Okay. So they're kind of just in a, a their own standoff and saying, "Okay, we're just going to sit like this for the next two and days." Channing Tatum is under is downstairs. Right. So they demand that he comes out, <laughs> and if he Which doesn't, he's I, they're going. I love this whole sequence, by the way. Oh, that this you like? I did. <laughs> okay. So they demand that he comes out, and then if he doesn't, they're going to shoot his sister. So well, they. He does they come say, out. Throw your gun up, and he throws a gun yeah. up, and they say, and Samuel Jackson tells uh, Walton Goggins, he's like, I, I, I bet he's got another gun. He's like, throw up your other gun. He's like, I don't have another gun. Well, you better, you better poop one out, or we're gonna shoot your sister in the head. <laughs> and then he throws up another gun in two seconds. He's like, see, I told you. Yeah. He's like, see, I told you. <laughs> come out with your hands up, and he he slowly starts coming out, pokes his head up, and starts talking to his sister. Uh huh. And it just gets blasted. Yeah, Samuel Jackson just shoots him in the back of the head. Brains and blood splatter all over Daisy's face. Oh, so <laughs> much. And like, there's it. I, it is a lot. Yeah. And I, this that that uh, gore or whatever you want to call it, violence, uh-huh. felt accurate. It didn't feel over the top. That one did. I don't know. It didn't feel over the top. Huh. It felt impactful and important to the story. And had Daisy's face not already been covered in blood from Kurt Russell vomiting on her, yeah, it would have been a much better moment, in my opinion. Huh. So had she cleaned her face off? Had she cleaned her face off or not already been covered in blood? I think if she had not been covered in blood and then only the blood of her brother getting splattered all over yeah. her, it would have been a much more impactful moment right um oh the, so the reason i say that it was so much blood and everything on her was because there's that one point it, and i didn't catch it the first time but where it's not even a close-up of her it's almost zoomed out and you could still kind of see her she's like wringing out her hair and you could just hear it like sloshing <laughs> onto the ground i was like oh my gosh it is so, it is she's just like rings it out and just like <laughs> what was that what pretty what crazy did it make <laughs> <laughs> it was sloshing um uh yeah Chan so Tatum he's is dead, dead which i was completely on board there for. goes another hateful no well i don't think so oh okay that's right you don't consider him yeah, he was not a hateful he uh he's dead we still have six hatefuls left Right? Um, oh, no, no, the Mexicans did. So we still have oh. five hatefuls. Yeah. Okay. But everyone, everyone but Daisy and Joe Gage is basically dying. Yeah, they're all yeah. bleeding out. Um, <clears throat> so then that's when she goes on a big rant about what a mistake that they've made. Yeah, so she, she, sorry, she tries convincing Walton Goggins. To betray Samuel Jackson to let her free. That way, her gang yeah. doesn't kill him when they find him. Yeah, because supposedly they have fifteen men waiting in Red Rock for them, and once the snow melts, they're all going to come down. They're going to kill you all. Uh, you made a mistake by killing Channing Tatum because he was worth. Didn't they say like fifty thousand? Something like that. He was the leader of the gang. Yeah. So, yeah, he was the leader of the Domingue gang, mm-hmm. not the Domingues. <laughs> uh, so then, uh, yeah, they talk about how all of these other men, they have bounties on them. And uh, let's see, Tim Roth, I believe, was like 12,000. I think they said Bob was like 15,000 and, and Joe, Ga- yeah, Joe Gage was 15,000. Blah, blah, blah. Basically saying, look. If you kill Samuel Jackson, you can leave. You can have uh, you can have uh, Tim Roth's body because he's gonna die, and you can you can you can go collect these other yeah. bounties. Everyone like, but we'll Jody. Let you go. Which was Channing Tatum. Yeah. Yes, because they want to take his body back. His to kids. Wherever. Yes, <laughs> they want his kids to yeah. see this. <laughs> um. Basically, I'm trying to remember. His, I know he's. 
thinking about it, but I don't know if he's actually really thinking about it. But eventually decides against it. Um, he shoots. Is that when the shootout starts? Another shootout? I yeah, guess? the, I don't, I'm trying to remember <clears> what happens after. So, that. uh, Samuel Jackson shoots Tim Roth and Joe Gage. <laughs> I know that. Oh, that's and, the and, actor and, Daisy and the character. Sh- shot in the leg too. Who does? Daisy? I, th- yeah. Because I, th- I think that was before, cause even then, Joe Gage says, look, there's still nothing that we can't forgive if we just stop yeah. now. And then I thought he just shot at her. I didn't think they actually hit her. I think she gets shot like in the foot. Maybe. I, I don't remember. It's not really. It yeah. Doesn't it, it doesn't affect anything really. Um, but so Samuel Jackson shoots everyone, goes to shoot Daisy in the forehead, doesn't have any bullets. Uh-huh. He's out of bullets. And. And he's terrified. Walton Goggins sits down and says, all right, Daisy, let me, let me hear your offer. Tell me what you got. Put it all on the table and let's decide. And she lays it out like, yeah. we got 15 guys waiting for you in Red Rock. You let me go. You let me take Jody's body. You can have the others. Collect their bounty. Mm-hmm. You're good. All you have to do is kill Samuel Jackson. He listens to it. Do you, th- do you, real quick, do you think the sheriff is allowed to collect a bounty like that? Or is he like disqualified? Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like would probably be disqualified because he's already getting a salary like he's, to do that. Yeah, he's not eligible for it. That's his yeah, job. That's what he's supposed to do. Oh, okay. Just but yeah, no. So maybe the fact that he was still considering these offers that he was not really going to be the sheriff. Maybe. Yeah. I, I, I doubt it. I, I, I do really believe that he was the, to, the yeah, sheriff. Yeah, I think he was a sheriff and I don't think he was ever fully considering it. No, I don't. I think it was, I, although, if you, if you look at this as reality, there is no reason for him to pretend to consider her offer. And he definitely pretends to consider it. Oh no, because no, he, he, there is because he says he says I want to listen to uh, her make a sales pitch when she got nothing to sell. I I think he was just he just thought it would be. Fun I thought he said since you have nothing to sell to Samuel Jackson, since you don't have anything to offer me, you basically you're a dying man. You can't help me. I'm gonna listen to her sales pitch. I thought that's what he was saying. Oh, is that what he's, that, that might that's, be it. <clears throat> I thought basically he was saying like, I want to listen to this salesperson who isn't actually have anything to say. Yeah, I, I took it the other way. I might have misheard it, but uh, I, it could go. <clears throat> way, I, I thought he was saying, you don't have anything to sell. I'm going to listen to her sales pitch and see if it's a better offer. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it, that, that makes more sense, but I don't know. But anyway, so he's like, you know, the only thing that you have, the only leverage that you have is me believing that you have 15 guys waiting for me in Red Rock. And I don't believe that. Yeah. So no, I'm, I'm not going to take you up on that offer. Stands up, passes out <laughs> instantly. He's like, I don't feel so good. <laughs> And then that, the, 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 I, I do enjoy the fear in Samuel Jackson's eyes. Cause you, that's when he knows. I was like, oh, it's all over. So there's no one protecting him. He's out of ammo. This, and she's making his character cool. reminded me a lot of his character from, uh, Django Unchained, who was, oh yeah, he's pretty much the same guy. Yeah. I mean, he, his facial hair was very similar. I don't know if it was uh-huh. intended to be like something that, would remind you of that. I feel like it has to be, especially. Oh, for sure. Because all of Tarantino's movies are supposed to be in one universe, like loosely in one universe. That that was kind of an intentional choice, but I'm sure it was. to have his character, who in Django Unchained was so overly confident, to be so weak in this moment. Yeah. Was it very uh, effective? You felt like, yeah, 
Well, yeah, what would you do? Because he, he had mentioned a few times, he's like, I can't move my legs. I can't feel my butt. I, I can't do anything. <laughs> you know, like he's, yeah. he's stuck there. And she's going for a machete, which she gets, chops off yep. uh, John Ruth's arm, which she's connected to, uh-huh. and is going for a gun. Should've cut off his, should have cut it at the wrist. Yeah, that's what I thought too. I was like, why at the elbow? Why not? I think she was just, that was the first thing yeah, she Yeah, I mean, it it does make sense because carrying an, an from the elbow down of an arm, not that big mm-hmm. of a deal, really, in this grand scheme of things. No, not really. Like, it, it didn't really impede her at all. But, uh. No. So yeah, she chops off his arm and is going for a gun, and he's like, <laughs> he's yelling. At Walton Goggins. <laughs> what boy? You all right? Wake up. <laughs> You're not down to the floor. Get up and shoot her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that, that scene had a lot of tension. It did. Yeah. For me, at least it did. Cause, cause at this point, who knows who's going to live, who's going to die. Like she could very well just get over to him and kill him. I Which, don't know. Again, uh, to Tarantino's credit, none of these characters matter to you as the audience. No. In a good way. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, like we don't know that Walton Goggins is a good guy, but we're, we're, we don't want him to die. Yeah. Well, even you don't, so you go and watch an Iron Man movie. You're very confident. Uh-huh. One, Iron Man is not going to die. Two, he's going to win. You go and watch the hateful eight. Right. You don't know who's going to win. It could easily be the bad guys. It could be who you like. It could be who you hate. Yeah. You have no idea what's going to happen. So when this is going down, when Samuel Jackson is panicking because he can't move, Walton Goggins is passed out, and Daisy, I, again, I apologize for using actor names and character names. I just know them better <laughs> for depending on who it is. Mm-hmm. Daisy is going for a gun. It is very stressful because you, there's no reason for Samuel Jackson to survive this. No. Like, if he dies, it's not going to be like, uh, injustice. You know what I mean? Like this, no, that's reasonable for right. him to die. That's fine. But by the, when she's almost about to get to the gun, Walton Goggins wakes up and shoots her and stops her. Yes. But not dead. I think she gets shot in like the shoulder, right? It's something like that. I thought she got shot in the face when I, so I, I'm, uh, oh. I'm not saying that's right. When I watched it, my first thought was she got shot in the face, but she didn't die, so she probably nope. didn't get shot in the face. I think she gets shot in the shoulder. Um, but either way, she shot, and uh, Walton Goggins is is back awake, so he's about to. Oh, that was that was the other thing I wanted to say. That's that, this is kind of when you find out. All right, not officially find out but maybe if you had suspicions that it was Walton Goggins who poisoned the coffee he's he's listening to her offer oh yeah and he's like oh wait a second he's like you saw who poisons coffee and you were going to let me drink it so <laughs> no i don't want any of your offers i again i i enjoyed him so much in this movie yeah he was great he he really is the best part of this he movie. was in justified and he was also in the shield uh-huh. and he's been in a few other things yeah but this is my favorite version of him, or his, my favorite character oh, he's played. Yeah, absolutely. Because he's... For sure. He's a bad person, right? Like, I think that's fair to say. But he's also a good-hearted person. He's a good-hearted bad person, if that is possible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but do we know that he's a bad person? Uh, it depends on what you think is bad. I mean, it depends on who you line up with in the Civil War, and uh, all that. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, anyways, so he's he's about to kill her, and then uh, Samuel Jackson stops him and says, "Look, we should do it uh, the John Ruth yeah, way. John Ruth he, saved your life. He saved you. Yeah." So basically, and, and like all all of this trouble was because John Ruth didn't like to kill his bounties, and he'd like to watch them hang. Yeah, 
so we should hang her instead. And they, they do. Move. They're both, both bleeding out, tie a noose around her neck, laying on a bed, and drag her slowly, inch by inch, to get a height high enough for her to choke to death. With John Ruth's arm <laughs> With <it>. still handcuffed <laughs> to her, hanging there. Oh, man. it. How do you... What is your opinion about that with her being a woman? Did that? I liked it. It was really nice to see All that right. teamwork. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like you I, maybe I, should have waited two extra seconds to let me finish my question before you, you ran into that. All right. Let's hear it. With her being a let's woman and her being so brutally murdered, did that matter to you? But apparently you liked it. So. No, because they even make a comment earlier. They say it to, uh, to the hangman, they say, don't you have any issues hanging a woman? He says, until they make a, a gun with a, a trigger that a woman can't pull or something along yeah. those lines, like essentially saying they kill just as, just as well as men do. Like they're yeah. all bad. Yeah. That, I mean, um, it's, it's an interesting. So no, I don't have, it's an interesting that. thought, right? Like the whole idea of you never hit a woman, right? That's, I think it's fair to say that's right. ingrained. In men who are valuable, at least. <laughs> right? Like, that's yes. a, that's a valuable trait. You never hit a woman. Yes. Now, what if she's trying to kill your kids? What if she's coming at you with a knife? What if, whatever reason, she is. You just choke hold. She, <laughs> she is threatening. Disarm and choke You or your loved one. Hitting uh-huh. them is justified at that point, right? And so, yes. Daisy, in this story, terrible person, part of a gang, uh-huh. definitely murdered people, had what she got coming. Yes. And I feel like they earn it very well with how crazy and evil she is throughout. Uh-huh. Right, because she even, which, which sounds, <laughs> sounds, she even w- spits blood on the Lincoln letter. <laughs> it sounds weird, but it's a compliment in some weird way that Tarantino was able to do something that is very appalling of an idea. Mm-hmm. Watching a woman get slowly strangled to death by two men laying in bed together, <laughs> working together. There was no color. That there was day. no color that day. Uh, but just red. Like, so for him to be able to do that, for him to be able to f- make you feel like, oh yeah, this brutal murder of this woman who has been shot and is helpless is justified uh-huh. is yeah. a sign of how well written this movie is and how well shot and how nuanced so many things were that is an extra frustration of how goofy a lot of the violence was to me. <laughs> so, so your, your complaint of the movie is he did too good in some parts that it, it, it ruined the, the parts that you didn't like. And my complaint is the majority of the movie was so good that these lacking parts drug it down. Yeah. Yeah. I'd <laughs> but yeah, so that's What's Samuel like, Jackson, Walton so Goggins. She's yeah, dead. she's dead. Yeah, they're they're laying there bleeding yeah, out. Presumably, Walton they're Goggins. dead, right? They're, he, I mean, Walton Goggins oh, even sure. says, "As my my first act as sheriff, and my last act as sheriff." Yes, I I do sentence you yeah. to die. Uh, so she's dead. They're both laying there bleeding out. And then Walton Goggin asks to look at the Lincoln letter. He then reads it out loud and makes a comment about how it looks good. Uh, they have a laugh about it. And then he crinkles it up. And <laughs> yeah. it's it seemed delightful. kind of rude, right? To crinkle up someone else's letter. Well, I mean, I know he knew it was fake. I think at that point, yeah, they had already decided it was fake and that neither of them were going to live and need it anyway. No, I know, but still, to crinkle up something of someone else's. 
<laughs> I don't know. Like, it was one of those things. It's like, I feel like maybe hand it, just hand it back. Give it back to him, let him. But I guess. Him. It was already ruined. It had his yeah, blood all over it. Anyway. I guess they both were aware that it was worthless, so it really wasn't that big a deal. It had yeah. no value. Yeah. But, uh, The Hateful Eight. Uh, what do you think? Overall? That's it. Great? Good? Bad? Okay? Oh, I think it's a great movie. I would say. I think it is a great movie. I'm, I'm so on board for this movie. I really enjoyed it. I will never watch it again. I can't imagine myself. No, nope. it's too long. It's really and, long. Uh, if you know what's happening, I, I might enjoy it. I might enjoy like- it a second time, but a third time, I, I would be way too much. I didn't think that I would with it being so driven by not knowing what's going on. Uh, I still enjoyed it. Uh, quite a bit. Yeah, so. I, that makes sense because you get to see the nuanced stuff that's like pointing out what's happening. Because like even yeah, but the even candy, then, it's, it's so subtle that it doesn't stand out to you. Yeah, even you know? the candy when I think it's Samuel Jackson when he was pouring coffee, he found a a candy on the floor in the crack, and he yeah. saw that the candy jar was broken. Uh-huh. Like stuff like that. Like I mean, it to me it stood out. And it was the first time I seen it, but yeah. I feel like there's a ton of stuff like that that will stand out to you, which would probably be interesting, but I, I would be shocked if I ever watch this again. Yeah. Mm-mm. But it's, it's, it's not all bad. It, it works. If it was half the length, I would say, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely oh, watch it again, but it's just too long. Three hours. It's three really hours long. is a big commitment. It is. Um, but yeah, so we, uh, that was the Hateful Eight. We want to say thank you to that our sponsors, it. Boss Play. They're an escape room in Oceanside, California. You can find them at boss play.com. Mm-hmm. You can follow us on Twitter at I Seen That Pod. Like us on Facebook at I Seen That. And we will be back next, uh, week, next Wednesday. I'm not sure what. When this our next episode is coming out, with uh, it'll come out when it comes out, people. All right, <laughs> just relax. Settle down. Within the next week, it will be uh, Room, Brie Larson's The Room, not The Room. It, that that title is very confusing. Yes, but Room, just Room, will come out as our next episode, Taylor and Isaac next episode. Correct. <laughs>